I listening to you know people. They their campaign, her campaign, still complains about lack of media coverage. I have never seen a more media. I, the base of her campaign is media, and it's like after multiple losses, I don't I don't know what more they want, but I do know that it's not helping a left or progressive effort. If I could ask, I guess the only thing I'd ask you before we get to Ben, one, are you interested in this enormous opportunity? <laughs> and two, do you think that there is something though, is there a lesson in the failure of her campaign about um, tr trying to triangulate between really trying to decommodify de society to some extent and just the sort of same old democratic neoliberalism. I mean, her campaign was kind of predicated on big change without real big change. Yeah, the way I read it is, no, I, first of all, I would not give money because that kind of money that I set aside, I've already given to four televangelists. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just out of just any out of extra to, to give anybody. Um <laughs> Because my saving my soul is clearly a higher priority than <laughs> saving the United States. Um, look, if it if here's how I read it: the middle is collapsing because the consensus of the last forty, fifty, sixty years that we're going to have a quote unquote booming capitalism with a big fat middle class that is going to go upward and onward that. That isn't true anymore. It's taken several decades for the reality of it to sink in. It took that long because people could paper over the end of real wage increases by borrowing. And they've run out. They, they can't do that on the scale they once did. And so it's over. And if you want to get votes, you've got to be able to offer people the idea of change. But the Republicans and Democrats, the Bushes, the Clintons, and all of that, that's not what they are. They are the people who rode in on the consensus. Um, in, the, in the earlier phases, because it was real, in the later phases, like Bill Clinton, on the fakery of debt, a debt-driven reality instead of a, a growth-driven reality. And so the smartest among them realized they've got to put forward a candidate of real change. The first genius stroke, and that was to put forward Barack Obama, because take one look at him and you notice something, he's a black person, and we never had that in this country before, and most Americans didn't think they'd ever see it, and so you didn't have to make a big argument about change, because this was change. The fact that he didn't have a program, that he hadn't been in long enough even to learn what exactly that meant... What difference does it make? He could get advisors. He would get advisors. All the conventional Democrats would help him. He was, he, was he was smarter than all of them. I mean, he, yeah. and he was a guy who, you know, I think he, he, genuinely, that is his ideology, and he's the best that ideology represents. But he was change, yeah. okay? But with hope and change being his slogan, by the time he was done, uh, there was no more hope because there had been no, no major change. And if you look at some of the statistics of what happened to home ownership among African Americans, his time was a disaster. I mean, right. There's a joke in the African American community. I heard the other day, the price of getting a black man in a White House was that the black people lost their houses. <laughs> um, okay, but you know, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it has its grain of truth. Right. Okay, he's done. In comes another change. This time, you know, it's a change. Because it's this sleazy, narcissistic, weird hustler. Right. And he doesn't hide it. He, he makes a virtue out of all of his uncouthness. So he's different, and he can get the right wing to say, hey, he's going to give them the finger in this establishment. So now we are four or five years, you know, four years of that, or three and a half, and it's becoming clear to more and more people that there ain't no real change here either. Still has 40% who love the theater. And he keeps the theater going. But, you know, it's getting long in the tooth. So you need someone. You have now a chance. The left wing was disappointing, the little bit of left of Obama. The right wing is more right wing, but it's also a disappointment. So now you need someone different. And poor Elizabeth Warren, who comes up with some different programs, insists 
that she's part of the mainstream by this crazy, I'm a capitalist. Really? You've got someone who says, I'm different. He wears socialism. That's, that's like being black. I'm different. I'm outside the consensus. I'm the new. I'm the thing that makes those conventional people say, you can't get elected. Just like they said about Obama, just like they said about Trump. And I'm, that's a terrible mistake of her part. She kept herself inside what she should have boldly stepped outside. She would have been a much greater uh, competitor of Bernie had she gone out and said, I'm a socialist too. Then there would have been a whole new uh, configuration. She, she, and she had a program. That. I mean, she, you know, and I think also an actual program to back it, too. Maybe. Yeah. But I, I, again, I think we're at the point where it's less the details, which very few people get into, and more. I hate to say it, but more the large issue. Where are are you really going to make a big change? Bernie promises a big change. Yeah, it scares people who are afraid of change. But the signs seem to be that most Americans want it. Yep. And she's saying, don't worry, I'm not the... Uh, uh-oh, bad big, move. Big structural change, but also get up and give a standing O for uh, Trump when he praises yeah. capitalism. I mean, yes. it's a performative contradiction. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.